What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are here with Banner of War Alpha. Yes, we are. Now, the reason why it's called Alpha instead of part one is because the Banner of War is an event, but it's a crossover event. So unlike stories like uh, Civil War, where you have Civil War part one, part two, part three, part four, so on and so forth. Instead, Banner of War is a crossover between the Thor and the Hulk comics. So you get Banner of War Alpha and then you go into a Thor comic, then a Hulk comic and a Thor comic back and forth until the story concludes with a Banner of War Omega, I think is what it is. Um, so here's one of the things that I would suggest is we're, we're going to include this and, and probably give it its own playlist where we're going to combine the Thor and the Hulk stories together. And then that way you can literally just keep up. So it makes things easier. So you don't have to jump between the Hulk playlist and the Thor playlist. So you'll find a link to that down in the description. But what this does is it initially gives us a bit of a recap involving these characters, uh, which we can cover here. It can't necessarily hurt for those of you guys who, who for whatever reason, don't want to see the other, th uh, other stories themselves. But the, the overall gist of this is is that um, in effect, Thor had become the new king of Asgard. And it had been building to that for quite some time, uh, really following the, the War of Realms and that kind of stuff, the fact that the throne had been handed over to Thor by Odin. But then somewhere along the line, Galactus had shown up talking about the end of times, which led to the Black Winter storyline, uh, where ultimately Galactus was a herald of the Black Winter, that the Black Winter itself traveled around the multiverse, consuming whole universes. And Galactus was originally tasked with traveling around the multiverse and finding universes for the Black Winter to consume only for Galactus to defect. Now that was a huge change to the Galactus mythos, to his origin story and all that stuff. We won't really know if that's going to stick long term. Uh, only time will tell. But then that went into the story of essentially Donald Blake. The idea that Donald Blake being the alternate personality of Thor had just kind of been chained in this alternate reality and things had kind of gone nuts and then ultimately he was defeated. But the bigger takeaway from this uh, is really the, the visions that Thor was getting and which ultimately Donny Cape seems to be building up to and him finding his own hammer. The visions he was getting was basically Thanos with the destroyer armor, Mjolnir, which was covered in the Infinity Stones, which just sounds daunting as hell, and leading like an army of zombies, essentially. And then, of course, Thor having to fight his own hammer, Mjolnir. So that was kind of his story arc. With Banner, it's a little more straightforward, but also a little more mysterious. That somehow in El Paso, 17 people died. We know by virtue of the ending of the last story, that's probably due to the Titan Hulk, but we don't necessarily know for sure. We're still waiting on an answer for that. All we know is that Banner being chased down by the Avengers just ended up escaping to an alternate reality and his story unfolded there. But the reality here is that these two paths are finally crossing with each other. Now the fights between Thor and Hulk are legendary. I mean, it's one of those hallmarks of Marvel Comics and the Thor and the Hulk mythos, right? That whenever any kind of a new story is told involving one or both of them, it's only a matter of time before they fight. It's like every time DC reboots, Batman and Superman always end up fighting somewhere along the line. Uh, so it's just one of those cool things that usually is just kind of a mythos of both of them. Whenever you're talking about a new iteration of a character, that's when you usually see that. So Thor achieving a new level of power, Hulk achieving a new level of power. It's really Marvel kind of got their finger on the pulse of the fan base who want to know how would Thor or Hulk be able to handle the new power of the other person? And so what you end up getting here is, of course, the fight breaking out between the two, again, kind of in this alternate dimension, because remember, Banner's sort of flying through the multiverse at the moment, uh, and they end up on a place called Sakreen, right? This alternate reality, where which is basically composed of cartoons, and what we're told is that it smells of cotton candy and puppy paws and death. That basically the way this works... <laughs> <laughs> Donnie Cates, this guy's got a twisted sense of humor. The way this works in this beautiful, adorable little cartoon town that looks a lot like Adventure Time, uh, that he says, like, a, it's a wretched planet filled with disease-plagued, war-mongering cannibals that devour the eyes of their young to appease their all-knowing pain god. I mean, that's pretty brutal, man. Not even gonna lie. <laughs> that's pretty intense. But one thing to know, and this is one of the things that I love the way that Donnie Cates handles this, because it's not a traditional fight between Thor and Banner. I mean, it is like they are fighting, but the whole thing about this is remember, the spirit of Odin is inside Mjolnir now, and so it has conversations with Thor. Not only that, that Banner kind of seems to have his own sort of Odin-Thor dichotomy going on between himself and like Betty Ross. Now, Betty Ross seems to be the mental personification of the Titan Hulk. That seems to be the case. We don't know for sure, but there's not really any indication to indicate otherwise, but the two of them are just kind of having conversations with themselves, and it's sort of reaches this point where it's like like banners like leave me alone betty ross and and thor's like that's final you know and it's like they kind of look at each other for a second and it's like who are you talking to and thor's like well who are you talking to and then hulk's like uh uh hulk smash and like they just start attacking each other again <laughs> 
right? This whole cartoon town is just being torn to pieces. Just the whole place is being just absolutely wrecked. And it's, it gets kind of nuts because at that point, uh, that's when Thor literally tells Sif, take us anywhere, anywhere where people won't get hurt in the middle of this fight, right? It doesn't matter where. And so ultimately they're transported to the Black Hand of God. Now, if you guys recall from the last Thor story that we did, the Black Hand of God is just this giant celestial hand that houses what is in effect uh, a tournament system, right? Like some of the greatest battles that have ever taken place across the universe happen in this, this gladiatorial ring. So it quite literally is the best place for the two of them to fight. And it's to a degree reminiscent of Planet Hulk. So it's nice little callbacks there. Of course, Donny Cates has a little fun with it as well, where he turns it into almost kind of a video game thing, right? Where it's like Hulk versus Thor, you know, who's going to win? Round one, fight, you know, and, and like that kind of a thing. That's cool. I definitely dig that, right? It, it would have been cooler if it felt more like Tekken than anything else. But again, this is a pretty brutal and knockdown fight between the two. Now, one of the things that Thor iterates here is that with everything that's gone on, he just has this hankering to hit something. And that's kind of been the nature of Thor, that whenever things become highly stressful, Thor's response is to just want to fight something. And as a warrior, it makes sense, right? That's how you deal with your stresses is like you fight things. And who better to fight them than the Incredible Hulk because the Hulk can take it. The other part of this though, and this is something that doesn't need to be reiterated, is that because of the 17 people who were killed in El Paso that we're still a little murky on the details about, that Thor, of course, wants to ultimately bring the Hulk in. But why not release some stress and smack him around a little bit, you know, while you're while you're in the process of doing that? <laughs> and so what you end up having, this is one of the coolest changes that goes on here. And it's something that I don't think we've seen since the Peter David run, right? The Peter David days of, uh, of the Incredible Hulk, that when the Incredible Hulk is pinned down by Mjolnir, the Incredible Hulk can't get past it, right? Remember, like, the hammer cannot be lifted except by those who are essentially worthy. And that's where Thor kind of gets a little caught up with himself and starts talking to Banner and is like, I'm literally going to take you in. And so ultimately, Banner ends up kind of going into manual. Remember, Banner's psyche is the one that's essentially controlling the body of the Incredible Hulk. And the Incredible Hulk persona itself is in the engine room, essentially, fighting just these, this constant onslaught of beings, which basically amps up the Incredible Hulk's anger or brings the Incredible Hulk down. And so what Banner ends up doing here is one, amping, the, amping everything up to level eight, which as you guys know from our previous coverage, the higher the level, the more extreme the threat, the angrier the Hulk gets, the more powerful he becomes. At the same time, what he also does is by going in manual, he's the one that fights. So it's almost like those Jaegers from Pacific Rim, which is really cool. Um, and that's when he's kind of warned, look, like you really shouldn't do this. Like we don't know what effect this is going to have in this situation that the incredible Hulk has fought Thor before. You've never fought the, you never fought Thor yourself, Banner. And so in essence, I would go as far as to say because of the different levels that we've seen, this is Bruce Banner in the body of the Hulk, most likely at World Breaker Hulk levels, fighting Thor. And it's kind of nuts because it's basically the mind and the intelligence of Banner. Now, one of the big issue here is because of the fact that in years past, whenever the Incredible Hulk manifested, Banner wouldn't necessarily know what was going on between the two. He doesn't have a full recollection of their historical accounts, right? Their historical fights. And so because those memories are in the mind of Hulk, those memories are pumped into Banner. And what it does is it gives him the advantage of having his own intelligence along with the wisdom that comes with knowing how it is that Thor and Hulk have fought over the years because how Thor fights the Hulk is different from how Thor fights anybody else, right? If a fight breaks out between Thor and Captain America, one, Thor's not going to go to the same length of, of you know, the same degree of strength and rage as he would fighting Hulk, but his fighting style would also be different as well because Captain America can't necessarily take the same kind of punishment that Hulk can take, but Captain America is also a more prodigious fighter. So how the two of them interact would be different from how Thor interacts with Hulk. So having all those memories and all that experience on his belt gives Banner this edge in the sense that like he's like okay if I can't lift Mjolnir then I'll just power through it literally pushes himself up and Mjolnir goes through him guts and everything just stuck to the ground and starts to heal himself and then like one of the coolest moments like he's drawn as like just this huge shadowy threat he's like Thor pick up your hammer and Thor's like I and like the two of them get into a fight because the reality here is it's kind of what they both want right like they're literally both coming from a place where like they've just been through a lot of crap and they're just looking for something to hit and they're there <laughs> in a gladiatorial ring and they just start smashing and fighting into each other now one of the cool things to also know is that the hammer of thor right odin's spirit is kind of feeding information to thor as this fight goes on and it's kind of like look i've got a lot of experience you need to let me get involved in this Thor's a little stubborn in the sense that he's like, no, I don't want to. Like, I want to just punch some things for a little while, kind of do my thing, but we'll deal with that later. What ends up happening, though, is the hammer, kind of with a life of its own, basically just 
flies up into the sky, right? And then comes crashing down onto uh, onto Banner. And the whole thing about this is it's cool because it kind of incapacitates Hulk for a moment or two. And Thor, of course, grabs the upper hand, uses it, and the two of them start fighting again. Now, one thing to know, this whole fight is being observed by all these people in this gladiatorial ring. And it's probably the single greatest fight they've ever witnessed, right? They're just kind of like, okay, like this fight is insane. It's nuts. The bigger problem here though is despite how capable Thor is, and despite having Mjolnir, because of the fact that he's fighting Bruce Banner, right? He's fighting the Incredible Hulk with the mind and intelligence of Banner and the strength of the Hulk, he's basically outclassed here. And if this fight keeps going on long enough, there's no way Thor is going to win. Because yes, Thor is a very capable fighter. He's not really on the same level of intelligence as Banner. He's smart enough to be able to adapt battle strategy. You just never really see him do it all that often. But when you do see Banner adapt battle strategy and, and essentially use his intelligence on that particular task, oh, he's a force to be reckoned with. It's really, really cool. And so ultimately in this moment, that's when Odin really kind of tells, tells Thor, look, you cannot hold on to this battle long term. Not only that, when I struck, uh, when I struck Banner, right, when I struck the Hulk, it wasn't like in years past where we've dealt with him before. There's something else here, right? He's not really possessed. It's more like he's haunted, but there's more in there than just Bruce Banner. Something else is going on here. You have to let me be involved, right? I have an idea. And so ultimately Thor's like, okay. And Thor relinquishes, right? Throws the hammer at Banner and the hammer literally just like crashes into Banner's face. And when that happens, it allows the spirit of Odin to leave the hammer and enter into the mind of Bruce Banner. And as soon as he appears, he was like, Bruce Banner, I would have words with thee. For the first time that I'm aware of and recorded history and Marvel comics, Odin has invaded the mind of the Incredible Hulk and is now challenging Bruce Banner. I'm excited to see where this goes, man. I'm curious, right? I think I think Thor number 25 comes out next week. I think it's a weekly series. Uh, so we're gonna go, we're like, we're gonna do this as it comes out, right? We're gonna cover this as it goes through, but I'm excited. This looks like it's gonna be great. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section and I will catch you all later. Peace.